idea. Mm -hmm. It becomes important simply because of this, you see. And it becomes more important for them to defend it because it is their idea than to relinquish it and to move on from it so that they can accept and bring into themselves that which is the opposing point of view. And for a period of time exist in that context so that they can expand on their own point of view. But you see, they are so attached to that which is their self, like you would be attached to your body. And your point of view is, is that this is your body, and perhaps your point of view is, is it's the only body you will ever have. <coughs> so you will seek to defend it, and you will seek to find ways in which you can make this body eternal. But ultimately, it is that your spirit is already eternal. And spirit dwells within this body to a context, yes? Yes. Uh, to, or shall we say to a degree? And in that way, your survival is guaranteed, but you are convinced because you tend to view yourself as isolated within the body, that you must defend the body, <coughs> so that the body being the only viable vehicle that you believe you have to exist, then you will also resist that which is called growing old, or what is termed the death experience. Mm. Well, ultimately, it's an unavoidable issue. <laughs> if it's unavoidable, then why resist it in either case? and just live your life while you're living it, you see? It's important. Yeah. We were talking about countries and defending a way of life. The people, uh, for instance, in the Roman Empire around 770, whatever it was, when we considered that the Roman Empire fell, uh, actually that form of government may have gone through changes, but for the people living there, there are still people living in Rome. There are still people enjoying themselves. We must also understand that it is uh, that the corruption uh, that was Rome at that time, it was uh, somewhat of a festering parasite within its own structure that caused its downfall. Mm -hmm. Its own people began over the course of time, and it was almost to the degree of being unconscious that they were no longer responsible for the original dictates under which this uh, uh, empire uh, was founded, mm -hmm. uh, that the individual people, uh, even unbeknownst to most of them, uh, were inadvertently creating an opportunity for this to change, so that, in fact, you could arrive at the point where you are at today. Do you see uh, so many people make similarities, uh, comparisons between the United States today and the Roman civilization saying that we are going through the same process they went through with their bread and circuses, their uh, pursuit of pleasure, their corruption of the basic ideals under which the state was founded, the individual losing more and more his individual impact in the society. Do you see these things happening in the United States now? Yes. Uh, and is it leading to the same kinds of uh, no. change? No. No. Indeed it is not. Because, you see, again, that, at that period of time, we're talking here about different cycles as to the flow uh, of consciousness at that time. As uh, it is now, it is much different. We find that uh, in this uh, space and time, uh, that uh, these events seem to take place at a far more accelerated rate yeah. than they did at that time. Uh, so we could say that encapsulated in 2,000 years, uh, we can bear witness to a 2,000 uh, or in 200 years, we can bear witness to that similarity in the Roman Empire of 2,000 years, you see. Mm -hmm. um, though, uh, w the point could be made that the, the, the Roman Empire uh, was in power for far longer uh, in terms of time than the United States at this present time is able to claim. Yes. Uh, however, uh, we find also that there is, uh, in this particular country called America, that there is an opportunity, a provision made within its own structure that it can change. Yes. Very few governments had this uh, provision in their, uh, we'll call it their basic constitution. Mm -hmm. Without it, then the government statement is it cannot change. And that's yeah. a lie. Yeah. It must change. Because as is true with reality, the basic truths permeate all that is. Mm -hmm. And if one of the basic truths about reality is continual change, then the nation must bear witness to it. However, in the case of uh, when authority has been transferred over to the auspices of a governing authority, and we do not uh, or are not uh, saying that there is a, a negativity concerning governing authorities, but rather 
that these governing authorities have at times uh, to become rather consumed with their ability to govern. And it becomes more important to be governing than what they are governing for or about. The country or the government will tend to want to protect its own inalienable rights. Eh? Mm -hmm. And in that way, it will have a tendency to ignore some of its citizens, citizenry yes. in that process. Because it will claim that it is working for the majority. But the truth of the matter is, it is not. It is working for the minority. Those the involved. minority who are ruling. That's right. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes. But there is this double think, this uh, philosophy uh, that the government is for the people by the people. Well, there's a small amount of these people that are running. <laughs> it's certainly for them. <laughs> yes. It serves them. Yes. It also serves the individuals who would be dominated by the same, you see. Mm -hmm. It does serve them. And uh, in the sense of what is termed a, a revolution, and we mean this uh, not in a, a, a physical outward sense as though to overthrow anything, because, you see, it is not that it be overthrown, because history shows you that overthrowing it doesn't work. It must change willingly within itself, just like the individual. Yeah. They must be willing to allow their consciousness to expound. So too must the government reflect this quality. Mm. Then the change will have taken place. Yes, and uh, there are great changes uh, in process. Oh, indeed. Yes, and you're right here is an example of one of them. Um, okay, we're going to take a break now and uh, go to back to Potentials Unlimited, and then we'll come back with more from John on the Out of the Ordinary Show. The Talk of the Town, KIEV, Glendale, Los Angeles, 87 AM. Out of the Ordinary, brought to you exclusively by Potentials Unlimited, the first name in subliminal persuasion, self-hypnosis cassette tapes, because change begins in the mind. Potentials Unlimited asks, what changes would you like to make in your life? Their 30-day proven effective method offers you effective tools to achieve those changes. You can unlock the door with subliminal persuasion self-hypnosis cassettes available at The Psychic Eye at 1011 West Olive Street in Burbank, The Psychic Eye at 13451 Ventura Boulevard in Sherman Oaks, and Alexandria 2 at the corner of Rosemead in Colorado in Pasadena. Okay, friends, and some of the uh, Potentials Unlimited Mental Health Series tapes available are uh, how to tape on relieving stress and anxiety, a tape on sexual abuse for those who have been victims of that, a, ta a tape on stop being angry, stop nail-biting, stop stuttering, successful retirement, up from depression, Vietnam veteran tape for the healing of the war, a tape on willpower and a tape on you and your child. And where is my parent for the adopted child and where is my child for the natural parent of adopted children? Many, many tapes in the mental health series available for from Potentials Unlimited. Hi, my name is Sandy Neville. A little over a year ago, our family was introduced to John via this radio show on KIEV. And as a result, our lives have been touched in many different ways. Many of you have been introduced to John in the same manner and will understand what I'm about to say. Next month, Joe and Jerry will be moving to Boston, and there's a real possibility that soon we will lose our weekly radio show unless we take action now. To keep this program on the air requires money, and I am asking for your help, not only for our own benefit, but also for all those individuals who have yet to turn that dial and accidentally tune into John to have their lives touched as yours and mine have been. John has talked many times about the word commitment, the only commitment I'm asking is one that you make to yourself, because this is your show, and the only way you can keep it on the air is through your donations. I realize you get many requests for your money, and I know if you decide to give, it will be a gift of love. Please, if it's important to you to keep John's words coming to us on a weekly basis, don't hesitate. Act now. Let's put the word commitment into action in the form of a weekly or perhaps a monthly donation. If you're willing to help, please make your checks payable to KIEV Radio and send them today to Joel Biani, care of KIEV Radio, Glendale, California, 91206. Thank you. John has said that to get more love into your life, you must put more love out. To make this easier for all of us, we've started the Love Network. 
This is not a dating service, but rather an opportunity to create new relationships in the safety and privacy of your own home. Your first name and phone number will be put on a list with others, along with the times of the day you would be willing to make or receive calls. It doesn't cost a dime, just a moment of your time to expand your world. Please call 818-791-9393 and say, I'd like to be a part of the Love Network. That number again is 818-791-9393. You can call right now. Potentials Unlimited asks, what changes you would like in your life? Their 30-day proven effective method offers you effective tools to achieve those changes. You can unlock the door with subliminal persuasion, self-hypnosis cassettes. Available at The Cosmic Connection in Northridge, The Ginkgo Leaf in Woodland Hills, and The Bodhi Tree on Melrose in Los Angeles. And some more tapes from the Mental Health Series of Potentials Unlimited. I Want to Be Happy, a tape on loneliness, a tape on the loss of a loved one, how to deal with that, recapturing youthful vigor, and sex within and without your marriage, a tape on my parents, myself, and a tape on relationship programming, how to program yourself to have more and better relationships. These are just some of the tapes in the Mental Health Series brought to you by Potentials Unlimited. And we're back. This is the Out of the Ordinary Show. My name is Joe Albiani. Jerry Bowman is here in trance. And with us, with us, because of Jerry, through Jerry, is John. And we've been talking about our attachment to sports teams, to things outside of ourselves, to countries, to ways of being that we we identify with as ourselves, and we act that out, we become very angry in defending those positions. And um, we were just talking about uh, the Roman civilization and our civilization, the, the comparisons that are constantly being made between the two, and where is it leading us? And why do we have this attachment to things outside of ourselves? Why do we want to be number one at the expense of other people? This seems to be, you know, John, we've often talked about how This age is the age of, um, well, the United States is considered the country of rugged individualism. And you often talk about the illusion of separation that we have, that we think we're separate from every other being. We don't see ourselves and others. And so the United States philosophy of rugged individualism seems to go right along with that illusion of separation. When an individual in India starves, is this any different than an individual in Ethiopia starving? No. Is it any different than an individual in this country starving? No. Is it any different than an individual in that which is the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics starving? Well, let me say this. It's it's only difference in that it seems more outrageous that it would happen in this country than Ethiopia. Good old people. Oh, I know that. But I mean... That, That's that, the sameness, you see. It doesn't matter where they are, what language they speak, mm-hmm. what color their skin is. Right. You see? Each who is on this planet as far as human beings, they all have internal organs, don't they? Oh, they're all the same. Yes. But they will separate themselves by appearance. Yeah. And we'll as opposed f- to by essence, you see? Because mm-hmm. in essence, there is no separating quality. So, uh, for us to consider going from the separateness of... Now, the United States takes pride in, in rugged individualism and separates itself from many of the cultures and the countries in the world will say it to you simply, Aristotle, it is the time now for nations to move forward in the consciousness movement, you see? Mm -hmm. They're already doing so. Yes. But they will not admit it, because this is not ultimately their outward goal. Right. They don't look at this, this is what they are doing, Mm -hmm. but ultimately they are. Yes. And they were reaching a point where they will begin to see the futility of the competition between nations as concerning sovereign rights, yes. as concerning possession in the world. You know that uh, the argument is as concerning your oil. Uh, now, uh, the oil seems to be basically uh, centralized in uh, one or two areas of the world. And these areas become, as your country would call it, strategically important. Yes because you have built up a dependence on them. Mm-hmm. So you will also build up what you call your situation with allies. Right. And you will use these allies 
to advance your position and they to advance theirs. Mm. Then once we are agreed to be allies, then <coughs> any that do not agree with us, then we must in some way or other convince them to either agree with us or we will set up fences and barriers to keep them from coming in and influencing these people. Our people, we believe is the phrase, yes? Yeah. And yet, who is our people? Well, we would, we would define that rather narrowly. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Those people... And we are after here that which is called a globular change. Yes. And that's not narrow at all. No. Has to do with the individual. It incorporates the individual in the, in the situation, you see. Where individuals are not cooperating with one another, they are... Excuse, we said this incorrectly. When individuals are not in competition with one another, but rather are cooperating with one another in the realization that the time has come for all nations, for all people, to see the oneness in what they are. And that to allow that which is the physical differences, the ideological differences, to be looked at for what they are. Their opportunities to become these thoughts, these ideas, and these feelings. And in becoming them, you will indeed be attached to them. But you can give them away. As though to say, if one individual says that I am going to fight and die for my country, whether it is right or it is wrong, then the individual is not in a position to allow himself to realize the nature of his own folly. Because he's too concerned with defending his country's right to be wrong. Well, in, the, in all of the countries on the globe today that I know of, and certainly in this country, the uh, military service is, uh, once you're in the military service, it isn't an idea of whether your country is right or wrong. That isn't an issue. That's never even thought of. And the whole concept of basic training is to break down the individual's individual desires and needs and questionings so that he acts uh, as a unit. He acts more like a robot. He acts more like a robot. So that he's able to suspend his moral judgment. And he's able to kill or, or risk his life for a cause that he doesn't even understand. Well, he is convinced that the cause is right. Yes. You see? Basically. Whether or not he has the necessary information. Right. Or as, uh, if we might term it this way, uh, applied his intellect to the situation to understand uh, what is to be uh, not only achieved, but gained from this experience. You see? Right. And both sides are convinced they're right. Yes. So they will argue this point, uh, in not only intellectually, but they will physically bring it into the world in the form of conflict. John, if you're talking about changing the concept of competition to that of cooperation, we're going to be running fundamentally right into the United States' whole basic philosophy of being. Competition is their economic system is based on this. Uh, yes, it is, but it is also... The underlying foundation is ultimately cooperation. In cooperation. Yes, they must agree to the rules. Yes. Of how to compete. The majority Once must. Once they have set the rules up on how to compete, then they are in cooperation in that competition, aren't they? Yeah. However, what happens is, is that as the play spends itself out, the rules change hmm. depending upon the awareness of the participants some of them want to change the rules of course so that it benefits them as you will find in, the, in your uh, making of your laws uh, the laws indeed are created to benefit all but we find out that there are many laws which are designed only to protect a few not the many yes and in this way, it preserves their right to rule, their right to dominate. When in fact, domination is not a riot, it is that which the individual will allow themselves to experience, you see? Yeah. It is an opportunity to be met. It is a challenge. But when we, when we talk, John, about changing the system from that of competition to that of cooperation, I know many people are going to say, oh, that's Marxism. That's, that's socialism, that's communism, and uh, that's absolutely impossible in this country. We can't deal with those kinds of things. Well, what we find here is that we find adulterated forms of cooperation uh, in all forms of government. 
because ultimately those who are in power will have a tendency to use it to their advantage. You see lots of this going on in this country at this time. And it's not no accident that uh, there is a lot of, uh, how we call it, uh, moral searching. Uh, as is the situation going on currently with the, what you call your attorney general. Yes. And also uh, with the various uh, individuals in high places of uh, government who have, in fact, misused the privilege of government. And religious people, too. Indeed. And it's no accident that this is all coming to the surface at this time. Hmm. Because you're going to about over the next ten years to be inundated with this kind of material. And then you will begin to see the futility, you see? Inundated with uh, the, when you say this kind of material, inundated with seeing the, the feet of clay uh, that all of our leaders seem to have. Yes, but we do not say this in a blanket sense, you see? Mm -hmm. This is not, we do not stand here to throw stones at your glass house. Mm -hmm. You understand it? Yeah. It is rather that we seek to stand here with a mirror and say, look, see what you're doing. Mm. You can adjust and change if you choose to. You don't have to. It's up to you. Okay, we're going to have to take a break here, John, for a few minutes. We're going to go to Potentials Unlimited uh, for some more tape information for our friends. Also, friends, if you want to see John, there's only two Wednesdays left. I can't believe it, but there are only two Wednesdays left when you will have an opportunity to see John. He'll be making his last two public appearances this Wednesday and the following Wednesday at 4808 Kester in Sherman Oaks. And please, if you've never experienced that, do come this Wednesday or next Wednesday or both, actually. And you'll wonder why it took you so long to get there. But we really do want to see you before we go back to Boston. So come this Wednesday, 4808 Kester in Sherman Oaks. And now we'll go to Potentials Unlimited, and then we'll be back with more from John. Potentials Unlimited asks, what changes would you like to make in your life? Their 30-day proven effective method offers you effective tools to achieve those changes. You can unlock the door with subliminal persuasion, self-hypnosis cassettes, available at The Psychic Eye at 1011 West Olive Street in Burbank, The Psychic Eye at 13451 Ventura Boulevard in Sherman Oaks, and Alexandria II at the corner of Rosemead in Colorado in Pasadena. Okay, friends, more tapes from Potentials Unlimited. Potentials Unlimited also has bilingual tapes, ideally suited for those learning a second language, especially if your second language is English. Also, accelerated learning, new approach and new programs for learning foreign languages and student sport programs in eight languages. Just some of the tapes available through Potentials Unlimited tapes. Alexandria II in the corner of Rosemead in Colorado in Pasadena is a store with those with an unquenchable thirst for the unknown. In addition to thousands of books and supplies, they also have some great audio tapes and videotapes, including John's tapes on Mount Shasta and other metaphysical tapes. Also, starting next Saturday and the following Saturdays, they're having a course for beginning astrology, taught by one of the best-known astrologers in the world at Alexandria II. They'll have the beginning course next Saturday and the following Saturday, which is February 27th and March 5th, and then after that, they'll be having intermediate course, and then after that, expert course. So you can learn all you need to know about astrology. Contact Alexandria II for further information, 818-792-7885. Alexandria II in the corner of Rosemead in Colorado in Pasadena. Journey with friends to the peace within. Join us at the Mind Skills Center in Westwood for our Hypno Meditation Group every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Come and explore the timeless treasures of the heart space. Call 475-7688 and join the Hypno Meditation Group every Wednesday, 7 p.m. at the Mind Skills Center. 475-7688. Potentials Unlimited asks, what changes you would like in your life? Their 30-day proven effective method offers you effective tools to achieve those changes. You can unlock the door with subliminal persuasion, self-hypnosis cassettes, available at The Cosmic Connection in Northridge, The Ginkgo Leaf in Woodland Hills, and The Bodhi Tree on Melrose in Los Angeles. Okay, friends, and from Potentials Unlimited, their fear series... 
some fantastic tapes to deal with some of our fears. A tape on fear of closed in places, a fear of crowds. Each one of these is a separate tape to work with just that individual fear. Agoraphobia, the fear of driving, the fear of water, the fear of flying. Many other tapes in the fear series brought to you by Potentials Unlimited Tapes. And uh, this is Joe Albiani, you're listening to the Out of the Ordinary show. And uh, we're, uh, I want to remind you that uh, John uh, will be doing just a few private sessions. We'll stop doing them on March 12th. So uh, if you want to get a private session in with John, you better call right away because we just have a few spots left. And uh, I do want to advise you to come on Wednesday nights. Uh, there's only two left, and you really do want to experience them. We want to meet you anyway, if we haven't met you especially. 818-791-9393 for any information on John or any of his materials. And, uh, John, we're back now. And uh, anything we'd like to say to our friends about what we've been talking about? Yes. And that is this. Man must learn how to cooperate without a sense of allegiance to that which he is cooperating with. Because when he has that sense of allegiance to it, then he feels he must defend that. As is in the case with what you call in the world your food shortage. Mm -hmm. And there is no food shortage. This is the caused by that which you call competition. Are not your farmers being paid not to grow? Yes. When there are people starving, should they not be growing more food, more food, more food to feed them? Of course. But it is the competitive aspect that will not allow them to cooperate. Yeah. Man is at the point now where he must learn how to cooperate on a world level, not a national one. Mm. When he gives his cooperation to nationalism, then in fact he will compete against another form of nationalism. If he is in cooperation, then he is not cooperating because of a dedication to the beliefs of a nation, but rather he is cooperating with the love of himself. And in sharing that love, each individual in that nation has a responsibility to share it with all that is in the world. Sharing love would be akin to creating the opportunity in this world, in this time, before even the end of this century, to bring about the end of that which is starvation, as an act of cooperation, as a goal for all people. No individual should starve from lack of food, least they choose it themselves. Now, some might argue that the individuals in these countries have chosen this position. We shall not defend that they have not. What we will say, is that you, if you are in a position to give because you have and you do not give, then you shall lose it. You shall suffer unto yourself. Your belly will become sour with what you eat. So you must create an opportunity to share what is yours with all who are in need of that which you have. And in giving to them, you give unto yourself also. For you create an opportunity to transform the consciousness of yourself and others in doing so. So in cooperating, we cooperate because we are, as is termed, a consciousness on a planet. And we must learn to cooperate to be on that planet. For if we do not, then we surely create the opportunity to end it. Right. God bless you, my friend. And God bless you, John. And thank you, my friends, from John and Joe and Thomas and Aristotle and Dan and Beethoven and Jim and List and Margie and Brenda. Good night. God bless you. We love you. Out of the Ordinary, brought to you exclusively by Potentials Unlimited, the first name in subliminal persuasion cassette tapes. It is the thought that counts. KIV presents the Out of the Ordinary for its entertainment value only. In doing so, KIV makes no representation concerning the subject matter of this program and is not meant to foster a belief in the occult. This is KIEV, Glendale, Los Angeles, leaving the air for our regularly scheduled technical maintenance. 
KIEV returns to the air at 5.30 a.m. this morning.